Hey beautiful, what's going on? Welcome to the Henna Soup channel. So glad that you're here with me, Khadija, leading expert henna hair colorist, and I specialize in Ayurvedic healthy hair care. And today I'm doing another reaction video of the gorgeous Courtney. So let's get started, let's just jump right into it. Let's see what happens. I absolutely love having red hair. I feel like it's my identity almost now. I'm a natural blonde, but I just feel like this suits me so much better. But I've had my hair this color for about a year and a half and I'm just ready for a little bit of a change. So I currently have henna in my hair. I make a lot of videos talking about it, um, but if this is your first time ever seeing me, hi. I do dye my hair with henna from Lush. For any of the stylists who are about to like rip me apart, let me just say, Lush Henna does not have metallic dyes or metallic salts in it, so my hair reacts perfectly fine to chemicals on top of it, but everybody's hair is different. Always do a strand test to see how your hair will react. Oh, poor Courtney! The styles and the colors, yeah, they, there's always gonna be someone that has something to say, for sure. So, yes, so I wanna see how her hair came up with Lush, but then she's putting dye over that treatment. Oh, so let's see. Okay, so I put on my shirt. Uh, I am ready to do this, I guess. I'm nervous. I have gloves this time for everyone who hates on me for never wearing gloves. <laughs> that sounds like something I would do. I definitely is someone who likes to mix henna with no gloves on. I'm so hands on, I have to feel things, but I always do definitely regret it. Wear gloves, yeah, definitely wear gloves because it's just henna can last, uh, you know, if it stains your hand, um, it can definitely last a few days. If you're familiar with the henna body art, that alone with good staining lasts like seven to 10 days. So I guess I should just tell you what I'm even aiming for. So right here is a picture of Brittany Snow and I really love her color, how it's more ashy red, more brown, and that's ideally what I'm aiming for. But I have a feeling I'm gonna end up with this color right here. It is a little bit darker than I would like because I still wanna be redhead and noticeably red. So I'm just hoping that it'll end up somewhere in between. Let's just do this. Let's just do this. She's, <laughs> it's funny, I'm just like, let's just do it. Let's just get this done and let's do it, yes. So, and she's about to use some dye. So it's not even, let's see, let's see what she's about to use. So I have the Demi Permanent in Dark Golden Blonde. And then I have the Light Golden Brown 5G. But here we go. That looks, I'm gonna take a picture and show yeah, you what Yeah, yeah, what does it look like? like? That's what this looks like. <laughs> you guys think Hannah looks like poop. That looks like, someone was sick pooping diarrhea. It's a really weird looking color of like dye. It's really, the way that it all oh, like, oh, so funny. I love how she sectioned her hair. You guys know I'm a big advocate for sectioning your hair. You wanna get good color, you know, penetration and get it all over. Same with henna, you gotta section it and then make sure that you're putting it all over the place, you know, get every little bit so you get good color, even color. So while it's on my head, I actually decided I'm gonna do my brows too, just a little bit because they are so blonde. So I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and put them on. And I also want to know for those of you who always ask about doing henna brows, it's the same thing. Of course you have to have hair because I believe some people who are trying to do henna brows are almost trying to like tint the skin. And henna is does stain the skin, but the thing is, is that if you have like thinner, um, you know, wherever the skin is that's thinner, you won't get as much dye deposit because the henna adheres to the layers of your skin. So the, the thicker that the skin is, like your hands, for example, or your feet, that's where you're gonna get the most stain. But if it's on your like back or your face, which, you know, I don't recommend. I know people do freckles and different things like that, but just avoid your eyes and make sure it's natural henna. Yeah, that will definitely just not last very long. It was not gonna really be like worth it. You know, so if you have hair, then yes, you could dye it. So the, exactly what she did with the Q-tip, if you have a little bit of leftover henna um, and indigo, whatever your mix, your hair color mix is, just go boop, 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 just put it on a nice little layer. Try to keep it a little, um, you know, not drippy, but like moist. And so if you need to go back over it a little bit or dip that in a little bit of water, you know, just dap it a little bit, like gently, like don't 
soak it so it's dripping you don't want to get that in your eye okay huge disclaimer do not get any henna and ayurvedic herbs in your eyes no don't avoid it be careful so if you don't think you're going to be careful then don't do this okay so i did my hair but i look so funny but before i show it to you guys i want you to leave a comment down below guessing how it turned out does it look good does it look bad is it too dark too light nothing's different what do you guys think she's got it covered up we can't see how it came out you guys think it came out good i know she put that title there like she had pure regret i don't know so she used dye over henna oh, let's see what happened i'm nervous too <laughs> It's not red at all, at all. This is yeah. not what I want. This is not what I planned. And I just gotta say, I do not understand. It's kind of red of beauty. I'm really hoping, like you can still see um, that there's still like red in it. So I'm hoping that this brown will fade quickly um, to get more of the red to show through. So I have hope. I really do. And now I feel like I lost myself. No, I think it's actually pretty. Um, it looks a little dark, but I'm not sure if it's because of the shirt she has on. There's dark hair, so it's blending. If uh, the whole shirt was light, maybe we could see how red it is. I think it looks pretty nice. It is a little dark, though. I think that she definitely didn't want it this dark, this dark brown. You know, and, and do you guys ever experience this when you're using henna and indigo and all of a sudden it gets really dark on you? Just in general, other than the dye, you know, aspect of using like a chemical dye. You ever have it get like dark like this and wonder, well, what do I do? I do have a tip for you. And what you can do is just use like our Sweet Honey Hair Nourisher, you know, or you can make a cassia mask uh, separately with some honey, some lemon juice, uh, but no, remember, uh, balance that out so it's not drying. But those will be really good ingredients to help lighten it out a little bit, give it a fresher pop. That would be an easy uh, fix. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty bummed. I just feel like I'm not myself. This is not who I am, yeah. Oh, poor Courtney. So I'm I'm back and I just thought of a really great video that Courtney has done and I talked to her about the henna videos she does and we really love like this one that she said did about like how to dye your hair with henna that copper tint. So I want to follow along in this video with this edition because you guys are going to love it. So let's get into it. So today, of course, we're going to be talking about my love henna. I know, I talk a lot about henna. I just love it so much. I feel like I have been a perfect example of why you should not use chemicals on your hair. <laughs> and every time I abandon my love for henna and go rogue, I end up so... I don't even know. I just end up really bad. <laughs> and I love henna too. So I feel like when I first saw like Courtney's videos and the way she felt about henna, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel the same way. You know, um, I just love henna. I love how natural it is. And this is a really great, you know, question about like, why should you choose, you know, henna over chemicals? You know, what can you do to get like down that path to transition even? If you're still using chemicals, how can you fully, really, truly go all natural? I, f I have an entire henna playlist because of how many videos I make talking about it, but I recently went off the bandwagon with bleach and hair color and all to just come full circle right back to where I was. And that's okay. As you know, I've always used the henna from Lush. It's a block, the color's always consistent, and it was just easy and easy introductory to henna, but I really was not happy with my color after a while because it was just getting so vibrant and so red. And I really love copper colored hair the most on me personally, rather than a dark red. Yeah, and so far, I really, I agree. I love that coppery tint, it's just a glow. Like, you know, red tint, when it comes to those who look really good with, you know, red tones in their hair, you know, it could be more of a burgundy, it could be coppery. You know, henna is so fun that you can play around with and get these different tones, like strawberry, golden, blonde. Um, but it, of course, the end result always is going to be dependent on what your natural hair color is or the grays that you might have. 
a few of you actually reached out to me saying that I could put amla powder in my henna and it would tone it down. So I was like, hmm, I can do what? And I found a whole new world of henna. And that's so cool because there are definitely, I know some of you watching are like thinking that henna is either a bunch of different colors, like how chemical color blends are and how they're created, but it is much deeper than that. Henna is just a reddish, you know, dyeing plant, the same that you use on body art. And with other herbs, you can really manipulate it. That's why I love the DIY method, because I feel it's like the best way for you to manipulate the color and to get really good results because if it's already all mixed all together. Like sometimes something cancels each other out. You definitely have more control, better color, and it lasts so much longer. I just had coffee, so I apologize, but I just get so excited talking about this. Okay, so I did a lot of research and I created my own recipe to create my perfect hair color. So I'm gonna share with you today what exactly I did and how I got this hair color, which is pretty much my perfect shade of hair color I've ever had. I'm so excited. I feel like I'm so excited because I feel like myself. I think you can tell in my other videos, I wasn't feeling myself that much, but now I am and I'm excited. Yeah, you can, Courtney is like, the, like me in that way. I'm so transparent, like it's hard for me to just like fake an emotion. So you can like see and feel how I'm feeling about something and I'm just like, giving it to like it is like how i am and how my exactly how i am and that's what i love about courtney and her videos it's oh, so much fun so firstly i got all of my products from henna sook um henna they are an amazing website i highly recommend them they are amazing they have a whole like resource library type thing they have videos on youtube it's just a great way to learn how to do everything so i purchased moroccan henna cassia and amla powder and this is throwback, but do you guys remember when the packaging was like that? Yeah, like the packaging is all brand new and gorgeous and beautiful. So yes, it all changed and got like a new look. Absolutely love this packaging. So much better than the foil packages and definitely so much cuter. So the recommended amount of powder total is about 150 to 175 grams for the length of my hair. I wanted to make more just because I would much rather have extra than not have enough for my hair. So I just, I wanted to just see how much it made and it made a lot. Yeah, and it does make a lot and it goes a long way. And the great thing is that you can freeze it and use it again next time. If you have a root touch up, you wanna do your eyebrows, like you'll have some left over. Um, so you do not waste the henna Sook products. You get every last bit of it. So I used 100 grams of henna, 100 grams of cassia, and three tablespoons of amla powder. I ravaged through my pantry and I found a tiny little packet of two chamomile teas. I didn't know if that was enough, so I just used a sleepy time tea because on the ingredients I saw it had chamomile. I couldn't imagine that that one little packet of tea would do anything more to my hair color. So I just threw all of it into hot boiling water. I added a splash of apple cider vinegar and a splash of almond oil and a splash of olive oil. I just throw things in, that's how I cook anyway, and usually comes out good. So I figured with the same with the henna recipe, just throw things in there. So I turned the heat off of the pot. I let it come down from its boil to just being warmish hot. I put it into the bowl and I just started mixing. And it's just 100% plant. It's literally nothing else. So you don't have to worry about any interactions, which is awesome. I put some super festive glad wrap on top of it and I just let that sit for three hours. Now Cassia and Henna do have different dye release times which I researched but I didn't remember at the time so I just mixed it together. But Cassia has three to four hours and this specific Henna has a one to two hour release. So I just left it in for three hours. And that's absolutely fine. It's on point. It's not gonna be such a drastic thing that's gonna really alter the color like that because the Cassia and the henna together is what's gonna make that gorgeous carpery tone. They are the main ones. And the chamomile gives it like that, if you're wondering why she chose chamomile tea, it gives it that boost and that golden, you know, yellowy kind of um, dye, to, you know, tone. So with copper, it's it's a really great addition to add like a herbal tea, like chamomile tea, if you wanna push that tone. 
and she added some great almond oil like to just add a bit more moisture to it that was amazing as well she could even add aloe vera powder or amla she wants to tone it down a little bit sometimes people find that amla in like lighter recipes when you're creating it makes it more of an ashy tone so let's say you use uh, cassia and amla you're gonna get a bit more of that ashy kind of tone and there's a really good book that you guys should get from Amazon the naturally coloring your hair book by Christine Shaheen and we're gonna add a link down below in this video so that way you can also check that book out because it's a really great resource if you're looking for you know more ideas and more recipes and and just more information about coloring your hair naturally when you want to do other tones that maybe we don't you know always discuss or uh, all the time but it's such a great resource because so many different variations that you can try and yeah so then it was time to dye my hair so i had just washed my hair henna sook says that it's best to apply the henna on damp hair so I think that must have been why it applied so easily. It literally went onto my hair like it was butter. It was so easy. I was like blown out of my mind. It was way easier than the Lush Henna because that one's really hard. So once I was done applying it to my hair, I wrapped it in saran wrap and I left it on for three and a half hours. When I washed it out, it washed out so easily. I don't understand why it might have been that it was so finely sifted that it just melted like off my hair so henna is known to be very drying to the hair and because my hair is already so dry from when i went rogue i applied a moisture mask in the shower and a lot of conditioner so my hair that night was very bright and orange but i knew that it was gonna take a few days to just kind of settle and look is true color yeah so usually um henna and indigo whenever you're doing like henna hair color treatments with whatever herbs and other herbs that you're using in that uh, treatment um you'll usually give it at least like two to three days to fully settle like it's called oxidizing and it kind of just settles into its own self it's kind of like the same way the henna body art kind of settles down it just settles and gets like this really rich like nice tone so it's it wait and see you're gonna see so this was the color on the second day it was really beautiful the top was a little bit more orange than i would have liked but it still looked so beautiful i was so happy to finally have like a really beautiful copper color so last night i showered as well because henna tends to make my head itchy because I'm sure not all of it comes out the first wash. Yeah, and sometimes that happens. Some of you that have been doing henna hair color for a while, and it happens to me, because remember, I'm doing my hair on my own as well, even though I have this gorgeous hijab on. <laughs> you know, I do my hair and I want to recommend that all of you get a very powerful shower head or a wand because that is going to be key to getting it out really easily, especially if your hair is long and you have a lot of hair or a lot of curls, you got a lot, a lot going on, that's gonna help so much. And it's also gonna help you avoid tangles. You know how you, if you're trying to just like flip and you know do all these motions to like get it out? When all you do is add a shower head and just go with the flow of your hair, you know, go down with the flow of your hair. And another thing is sometimes some of you might notice that you lose more hair in that showering that's completely normal because of the amount of hair that you normally lose in an average day which is what, about 50 to 75 hairs a day you're just losing it right then and there in the shower because the henna is like getting you know kind of loosening up all those dead hairs and whatnot so it's overall a good treatment don't be nervous when you see like some of the hair like coming out you know we definitely lose a bit more hair when we're doing a henna or ayurvedic hair treatment not breakage i just want to make sure that's clear that it's the normal hairs that you usually lose if, if anything else is abnormal then we can talk about that then you can definitely comment down below and let me know you know your experiences with that as well this is how my hair was when i got out of the shower it's very dry doesn't feel that nice henna t is known to make your hair very dry so i rely on products when i get out of the shower that really help i used a detangler an anti-snap serum a leave-in conditioner but disclaimer if there's aloe vera powder in the mix as well then yes, that will make your hair so much softer, so much more moisturized when you come out. Um, use the cleansing co-wash. <laughs> this is really restorative. It's not your typical co-wash. It is a restorative 
conditioning treatment infused with shikakai, and it's the shikakai that makes it a natural co-wash, not some you know, other ingredient like, um, like a chemical agreement or any other type of ingredients that typically are a trigger in a co-wash that makes it a co-wash. You know, it's the shikakai powder. You gotta use it. It's good, trust me. You guys will love this. Hannah Sook says that adding aloe vera makes it much more hydrating to your hair. So I'm going to purchase that next and add that to my recipe to see how much more that helps with the dryness. But overall, I freaking love my hair. Oh, I'm so happy. Am I crazy or does it look like a natural redhead color? It's like orange copper but it's not too vibrant the ends prior to henna were very dull and not taking color very well and they've gotten so much better they almost completely match the top so to be honest when i started seeing courtney's videos you know because i was looking up who's talking about henna silk i want to see what you know reviews or what people are saying or what recipes and products they've tried so and i found her channel i definitely thought she was a redhead naturally. I, I definitely did. I did not know she was a blonde, but you are the, you are a blonde because now you're blonde again. So that was a cool kind of video. So I love how her hair came out. So I don't know about you guys, but I definitely really, really love it. And it just shows how versatile like henna as a natural hair dye is and just the options that you can have with the red tones and red branches and have fun with your hair at the same time. The DIY method is hands down the best method of doing henna hair color that you will come across. Professionally in the salon, that's exactly what I do. That's exactly what I teach. And if you are a professional watching and you're really curious about how you can do henna hair color professionally in the salon or Ayurvedic hair treatments, you know, when you're doing deep conditioning treatments, herbal treatments, you know, all those type of really nourishing treatments that you can do for your clients like in between their color and their styling and whatever services they're getting, that is a great add-on to your business. You definitely have to go to hennasook.com and just click professionals and you get all the information right there. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, you got to subscribe because I got videos for you every Sunday. Tuesday and Thursday so you don't want to miss out those videos I always got some fun going on and new and I'm working on some new stuff and we're gonna have fun with these new boxes that we have coming out in October so stay tuned you guys are gonna love our beauty boxes they are gonna be so delicious and they're gonna be at a super amazing low price so stay tuned for that and if you're not already subscribed to our mailing list you definitely need to sign up just go to hennasook.com sign up for our mailing list and that way you'll get notified right away when the boxes launch i'll see you next time bye